How much butter was in this? Uh, uh. That is absolute dog sh What the f have you done? What are you doing? Just what the f are you doing? You're sh You are so sh you don't even realize what you're doing. You're Pathetic. Today we are going to look at some moments where Gordon Ramsay went a bit too far. Be sure to watch this entire video as you are not going to want to miss out on what we have today. He blocked a fan over a joke. That Looks is like, yeah. shocking. He should be ashamed of himself. Do you want to win any of these items on the screen? If so, be sure to watch the whole video, leave a like, and comment the hidden message. Here is another good example of good old Gordon beating someone to the punch. This Twitter user might have just been looking to start something with Ramsay, but Ramsay took the high road and tuned it out. How? By simply blocking this person on Twitter and never looking back. The picture this Twitter user sent to him looks like a sad hot dog with toothpaste on it. So it's no wonder why Ramsey didn't have time for this person's games. We're sure Ramsey gets loads of personal messages and trolls that target him because of his attitude. So why not just shut them up entirely by hitting the block button and moving on to the next poor soul that tries to defy him. If you think about it, this is a window into Ramsey's personality in a way. He doesn't have time for this crap, so why waste it? You'd think he'd be the guy to go through every message and wage war on those who insult him or try to make a mockery of his work. And yet, he doesn't because he knows that his work speaks for itself despite what his critics say, and that goes for the social media crowd as well. This is definitely a funny but kind of a necessary block, as the fan was obviously joking around. Either way, it shows how Gordon does not play games when it comes to Twitter or cooking. No staring allowed. Having Gordon Ramsay tear you down for your cooking skills is bad enough, but having him rip into you for simply looking his way is another thing altogether. Ramsay took issue with one Hell's Kitchen contestant who couldn't stop staring at him in the kitchen. It's not just that Chef Mary was staring at Ramsay, but she seemed to do it without even blinking. Creepy much? Don't stare at me, Mary. Don't stare at me, Mary. No, You're chef, spooking I'm me. Sorry, chef, I'm sorry, chef. It's a social faux pas that Ramsay warned her about, but Mary couldn't seem to shake it, and the other chefs noticed. It's obvious that Mary's staring gave Ramsay the willies when he remarked that she stares at him like something out of the shiny. Yeah, but just, uh, like you f mad into swords. We're gonna go out on a limb and assume that Ramsay was referring to Jack Nicholson's insane character, Jack Torrance. Then again, maybe Ramsay was comparing Mary to those creepy twins in the hallway. Either way, no chef wants their Hell's Kitchen claim to fame to be that Gordon Ramsay once compared him to one of the creepy creepiest horror movies of all time when he told someone to jump in an oven. This isn't like Hansel and Gretel throwing the nasty wicked witch into her own oven, but it may as well have been. With Chef Gordon Ramsay's two true, highly stinging insults, it's not a stretch to say that he sometimes chucks his contestants, chefs, and trainees under the bus or into the proverbial oven. In this case, Ramsay was so annoyed that he told his contestant to throw his own self into the oven. Brutal. I wish you'd jump in the oven. That would make life easier. That would make my life easier. Ramsay spat at one of the chefs in a particularly fiery episode of Hell's Kitchen. Maybe the guy didn't cook or bake something well enough, or maybe the guy overbaked something. Either way, this is a great insult to use when someone is getting on your nerves, but at the same time, it definitely was a bit too much to say. Vegetarian bashing. I'm allergic to vegetarians. Oh, I, see. I come out in a rash. <laughs> and my, my, my skin starts getting irritated. Uh There's never been much love lost between Gordon Ramsay and vegans. After all, the shouty English chef does own a plethora of steakhouses and a burger chain, and he's even been vocal in the past about his distaste for people who don't eat meat. Clearly, live and let live is not a philosophy that the television star subscribes to. In 2003, when Ramsay was asked about his most recent lie, he replied to a table of vegetarians who had artichoke soup. I told them it was made with vegetable stock when it was chicken stock. He followed this up by feeding meat to a vegetarian during National Vegetarian Week. Passerbys were invited to sample pizzas at a struggling Italian restaurant, and when one of the volunteers mentioned that he had been a vegetarian for eight years, Ramsay offered him a slice of a special veggie pizza. After he had eaten it, Ramsay told him, wait for it, that the pizza had ham on it. Ramsay was then filmed laughing and telling the restaurant's chef they had converted to vegetarian. As the volunteer hurried away, Ramsay called out after him, good luck with a Vegemite. He also sparked a huge debate on Twitter after heavily mocking vegans in a viral tweet. He wrote, I'm a member of PETA, people eating tasty animals, dot dot. His tweet has currently been retweeted over 40,000 times and liked almost 150,000 times. It's also triggered a massive discussion in the comments below with hundreds of people debating the pros and cons of veganism. One person wrote, all right, I love you, but hating on vegans is getting out of hand. Another individual commented, you're just a desperate individual intimidated by the rise of the hashtag vegan movement. It's the future. You should embrace it. Even the official PETA Twitter account had to join in on the replies. Either way, he has shown a lot of hatred toward vegan and vegetarian people. A lot of what he has said 
has definitely crossed the line. Amy's Baking Company. When it comes to sharing his opinion, Chef Gordon Ramsay doesn't hold back. What you see is what you get. Screaming in your face personality has made him a reality TV star and more recently, an internet meme. The sketch proved he can poke fun at his reputation and laugh at the moments he's lost it. But there's one blow up that still gets his blood boiling. In fact, when asked when, out of every show he's filmed, he felt angriest, he doesn't hesitate for a second. Amy's Baking Company. He says flatly. He visited the Scottsdale, Arizona based shop back in 2013 while filming an episode of Kitchen Nightmares and soon found himself so utterly fed up with the store owners, Amy and Sammy Buzaglo, that he quit on the spot. And the right thing for me is to get out of here. Good luck. I've never thrown in the towel, ever, except for this one particular situation, he says, leaning forward in an armchair at Williams Sonoma in Midtown Manhattan, where he was demonstrating new recipes using the Phillips air fryer. I saw this lady trying to portray two customers that store-bought nochi that can sit at ambient temperature in a sous vide bag on a shelf for three years and dictated to customers it was fresh. You can't do that. You can't rob customers. Over the course of the taping, Ramsey also caught Sammy collecting tips meant for servers and found the couple was unreceptive to his criticism and advice. And while Gordon was not really in the wrong for attacking Amy and her company, it was definitely one of his most savage moments that just crossed the line a little bit. But this is also a case where Gordon had to stop when he disliked both contestants. Whenever we watch a show with people getting voted off, the last half of the show is really what we're watching for. We've seen them jump through hurdles, we've seen them go through hardships, but now we just want to know who has to pack their bags and go home. We can't imagine the pressure and stress people have when they're in this situation, and all they want to do is continue on in this recorded journey. So when Gordon Ramsay, of all people, says that a decision is hard for him, the adrenaline must have started pumping immediately for these two people. After all, situations like this are what changes people's lives and can lead them to triumph or can set them for a loss. But here it doesn't seem like either of them are winners this time around, and Ramsay made sure they knew that. This is definitely something you don't see every day on TV shows, but knowing Gordon Ramsay, of course he would do this. The Idiot Sandwich. This might just be Chef Gordon Ramsay's most popular insult, with his fans and the rest of the populace that are active in the meme world, sharing it across more multiple platforms, and in different meme variations. This is definitely one of the insults inducted into the Meme Hall of Fame. Even cosplayers and fans have dressed up as this meme. It's just that hilarious and famous. Here's a little bit of background on the whole incident that inspired the meme. In a video clip, we see Chef Ramsay holding up two slices of bread to the ears of Julie Chen. He proceeds to shout at her, asking her hypothetically, what are you? While she answers, an idiot sandwich. What are you? An idiot sandwich. With a downcast look full of shame. The clip actually comes from a parody skit of Hell's Kitchen called Hell's Cafeteria. There probably aren't a lot of people that could get a promising chef to admit they are an idiot sandwich on television, but it looks like Ramsay was blessed with this skill and continues to make millions of dollars doing so. Either way, this definitely crossed the line just a bit. My grandma can do better. Well, I guess cooking runs in the family because this insult was not one to forget. It seems that when Gordon Ramsay wants people to know that he can cook, he really wants them to know that it's in his blood, that it's not just a skill and dedication, that it runs in the family, that his dear old grandma can cook too. In fact, she can cook way better than a lot of the chefs he has had under his wing on his show. The catch? She's passed away. This insult went flying after Gordon Ramsay talked to his customers who were served Caesar salads. He apologized to them because the salad was not up to par. He takes the issue back into the kitchen and wonders just why the heck the salad was served with bits of carrot and radish. He then shouts, my grand can do better, and she's dead. Wow, that is a bit too harsh. You surprise me. Gordon Ramsay is a difficult man to impress. He knows his stuff, he's very experienced, and he can tell when he's being fed a load of bullcrap, but when he is impressed, he doesn't hold back. He doesn't skip out on telling the other chefs how good their cooking is, or how tasty the dish is, or how they can help improve their craft. So for a young contestant, it's probably a dream come true to be told by Chef Ramsay that he has surprised him. This poor contestant told Ramsay how he gave it all he had, and will continue to give him 110%. But apparently Chef Ramsay isn't quite done with this contestant's work. It looks like Chef Ramsay is surprised at how bad he is. The poor contestant still said thank you anyway. So how did Gordon go about this? Instead of simply stating he did not like the contestants cooking. Gordon tricked him into thinking he loved, but he then went on to say, I'm surprised. Surprised at how sh you are. Definitely a harsh one to say the least. And what makes it even worse is how young the contestant was. You do seriously surprise me. Thank you, sir. You surprise me for how sh you are. Uh you're in a kitchen, donut. Sometimes the competition in the kitchen can get a little bit intense, and contestants run the risk of forgetting where they are or what they are doing. After all, who wouldn't be feeling the pressure when surrounded by great chefs? Especially when said great chef is the world-renowned Gordon Ramsay, who has a reputation for being tougher than tough. For this poor contestant, the pressure got to be too much, and he just had to vent a little bit. His comments, of course, did not go unnoticed by our favorite sassy chef. The poor man said, it's hot in here, or is it just me? Chef Ramsay didn't miss the opportunity to use one of his favorite insults. It's a kitchen, you donut. Do you f 
donut. The fact that the guy was wearing some sort of suit probably did not help the heat at all. Dang. He compared a contestant's food to an animal's private parts. Slightly phallic in terms of looks like the bison's pink. I didn't want to say that. Not the most attractive. One of Gordon Ramsay's trademark insults comes out when he's looking over at either undercooked, overcooked, or just whatever inexplicably weird food the people at Hell's Kitchen have come up with. It is in situations like this when Ramsay comes up with things like, what is this? Or it looks like, insert very interesting and hilarious comparison here. The very thing happened when the cooks were preparing what was supposed to be salmon, which of course didn't end up looking like salmon at all. And then Chef Ramsay agreed. In fact, he couldn't even tell what the dish was. Instead, he claimed that it looks like a bison's private part. Not that any of us know or would want to know what that looks like. It's enough for us to simply hear the phrase from Gordon Ramsay himself. But dang, that was definitely a bit too much. Harry Potter shade. Gordon Ramsay is a British man. He's keen to show that he isn't only very well versed in terms of his culinary craft, but he's also very proud to show the world that he is, in fact, quite up to date with British pop culture. And in one particular segment of his show, he blesses the contestant with his knowledge of Harry Potter, in particular, his knowledge of the Weasleys. The Weasleys are a wizard family in Harry Potter who are known for their ginger hair. In this particular incident, the contestant put a tad too much ginger in their dish. So of course, Chef Ramsay comes in to, well, not rescue, but insult the inferior cooking. Ramsay said, you've put so much ginger in this, it's a Weasley. That ought to remind us all to be careful with the ginger. Not only was this completely unnecessary, but it really threw shade at people with orange or ginger hair. Definitely one of his most savage roasts of all time. Meat or flip-flop. We're probably not alone here, but a piece of meat that resembles an old flip-flop is never going to be a mouth-watering dish. Sneaking a poorly cooked piece of meat by Gordon Ramsay is about as easy as breaking into Fort Knox. It simply cannot be done, and it's only a matter of time before Ramsay calls out the chef in question and proceeds to rip them apart. In this instance, what appears to be a piece of pork belly has been ruined, with Ramsay Ramsey calling it not just overcooked, but comparing it to Gandhi's flip-flop. Crispy as f and it looks like Gandhi's flip-flop. Ouch. That's definitely not the sort of comparison that a chef wants associated with their skills. Chef Jillian seemed to get a kick out of that insult and is amazed at Ramsey's creativity in criticizing the dish. I don't know where he comes up with this stuff. Gandhi didn't even wear flip-flops, exclaimed Jillian. He lived in the jungle. I don't even think the dude had shoes. Uh, Jillian? You might be confusing Gandhi with Tarzan because Gandhi didn't live in the jungle and he definitely wore sandals. Regardless, nobody wants to eat a flip-flop. Proof that Ramsey can make anything an insult. It's not just one mistake that causes Ramsey to lose his cool in this Kitchen Nightmares episode. It's multiple blunders that put the customer's health at risk. When confronted about rotten lettuce on salad plates, Ryan tells Ramsay that they get the lettuce pre-washed and it's not checked before going out. Strike one. If that weren't enough, Ramsay discovers soon afterwards that the desserts in the display only case are going out into the dining room. That's strike two, buddy. Any restaurant owner or chef worth their salt would be appalled at those two failures alone. But Ryan seems to just shrug it off. If there's one thing Ramsay watchers know, it's that the madman doesn't ever shrug something off. And will rain down on those who do. Poor Brian. He had no idea what was coming when he and Ramsey walked down to the fridge. It's there that Ramsey discovers a tray of raw chicken that wasn't properly put away. Strike three, and you're out, Brian. Hey, Panini hit. Listen to me. Are you listening? Ramsey screams at the eerily calm chef. Maybe it's just us, but something about being called a Panini hit by Ramsey just seems way more insulting than his usual tirade of expletives. <laughs> Hey, Panini head, are you listening to me? Yes. Either way, this was definitely a crazy insult.